What's up, YouTubers? So today's video, I got something interesting and a little fun game we can all play together. What I got for you is I got 60-10, 70-18. We're going to do a penetration test comparing these, but a little bit different than the previous video. I kind of thought, well, you know, the 60-10 really penetrates a lot more, but how much of that is just because I was running lower amperage on the 7018 at 120 amps. Normally I run at 130. So I thought, why not set up a four separate fillet weld test? So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get into it. So here's a test setup. I'm gonna run four fillet welds on this piece and four on the other one. I'm going to start with the 6010. Now for the 6010, I'm going to use 95 and 100 amps, and I'm also going to vary the arc force settings. So arc force, I got a video on it. If you don't know what it is, I'll put a link in the description. You can watch it. But the standard arc force on the Miller Dynasty I have, it recommends, I think, 60%. Well, I'm going to run two of them at 60, one at 70, and one at 80. And we're going to see if the penetration increases at all on the 6010. Then, after I'm done running that, we're going to go over to the 7018 one. And we got something a little bit different. So I have three rods. I'm going to run one at 120, one at 130. I'm going to one, run one at 120 with very high arc force, because my dynasty says, I think, 20 or 30% is the recommended dig or arc force setting for 7018. We're going to run it up at like 70% arc force just to see if arc force on 7018 increases penetration. I think it will, but realistically, it's just going to probably make excessive spatter. So I don't see much use in that, but we'll see. And then as a bonus to try and get 7018 to uh, catch up to 6010, we're going to run a 532 rod so a bigger rod at 150, 55 amps and run a pass on that and see if we can't get better penetration with the bigger one. So that's kind of what my thoughts are. Now, at this point, place your bets as to who's going to come out on top, 6010 or 7018. And by on top, I mean have the single weld with the most penetration. I think that all of these eighth inch 3.2 millimeter rods, the 6010s, are going to win. However, I'm unsure on that 532nd at 150, 55 amps, whether or not that's going to come out on top. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to say 6010, make your choice now, and let's weld all this stuff up and see what happens. All right, got 6010 at 95 amps. Arc force set to 60%. All right, set it at 100 amps, same arc force. I'll tell you what, that was definitely hot. You can see how much that lower plate is glowing there. There's no question it burned in there. Wow. All right, let me cool this down. All right, for this weld, drop the amps back down to 95 amps. I set the arc force at 80%. Now, the previous ones, I thought they were at 60. They were at 65%. So an increase of 15% arc force, 95 amps. So that ran pretty bad. It was almost like I had a, a massive like TIG arc going and I wasn't depositing much metal. Like it just seemed like the arc was excessively hot and I had to sit there and it's like, okay, I kept feeding rod in, feeding rod in and it just, man, that was a tough bastard to control. I'm sure there's gonna be some undercut on that. All right, last test with 6010, got same 95 amps, 90% arc force, very high arc force. Now, realistically, I should have been running 90 amps for this, but just to show the difference, if there's going to be one, is 
I figured I would stick for the 95 like I did for the first run. All right, let's get at it and see what happens. So I got that a little bit better under control. I was feeding in a lot more rod than I did previously and it seemed to help. The burn off rate of that's pretty ridiculous. I'll oh, cool this down and we'll move on. All right, so this guy we're gonna run at 130 amps. Arc force is set at 30%. All right, same 130 amps. I cranked up the arc force to 50%. Now you would normally not run higher arc force on 7018. I have a feeling it's gonna cause excessive spatter, but hey, we don't know that until we try it, right? So let's see what happens. So the interesting thing about that, I'm used to with 6010 when you run more arc force, you can literally just feed the rod in and it just melts off faster. With this, it was almost like the flux didn't want to melt and I couldn't push any more rod in. I tried, I basically had to stop where I was, feed more rod and move like two millimeters forward, feed more rod in but the melt off rate, it just didn't really want to melt off. So I really didn't dig into there very much by the feeling of it. It just wasn't melting off well. All right, so this rod, same 130 amps. I set the arc force for 65%, the same as what you run 6010 at. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. So let's get started. So that ran not really any better. The puddle had a really weird shape to it, almost like the slag was hanging on the bottom edge of it. I don't know how to describe it, very odd. All right, got this 532, 7018. Gonna run this at 160 amps, which is, I don't know, normally I'd probably run it a little bit hotter but I think it'll work for us since this is already a little bit preheated and it's only quarter inch plate. Oh, and the arc force is at 30%, so we're back to normal arc force. All right, there you have it. Cool this off and then uh, clean them all up and cut and etch them. Got them all cut and etched up. The proof is in the pudding. Let's start and look at these. All right, here's the pudding. Start out with number one and two. Slightly increasing the amperage seemed to give a little bit better penetration, but you can see how that bead kind of slumped down and caused undercut at the top. I think this was just due to the heat allowing that molten puddle to stay liquid longer so it's slumped due to gravity. Now bead three and four with much higher arc force has differing results. I wouldn't say the penetration is really better on either of them. Now three, I hit more of the bottom plate than the top plate. It was pretty difficult to control and realistically I wasn't feeding in nearly enough rod. But I would say that the penetration didn't increase much realistically. So, you know, considering how you have undercut at both the top and the bottom toes of both welds with higher arc force settings, I would definitely say that you don't want to run excessively high arc force because you guys got to remember when you get undercut like that, you're guaranteed to have slag in there and it's going to be impossible to remove that. And then when you weld over the top of it, it's likely going to stay in there, which is going to create a weak weld because you'll have like a slag entrapment the whole length of the toe of the weld. So I wouldn't recommend higher arc force setting. And I'll show you how bad that undercut actually is. Let's look at some pictures. So that whole darker gray area, the black area, is actually undercut. Now some of it has slag stuck in it, but it's sunk in that much. 
And then if you look on the right side of the picture where it looks like a divot is cut out at the top toe of that right weld, that's also undercut. So clearly having high arc force isn't a huge benefit for penetration and it just is going to undercut your plate. So keep it in a reasonable percentage. So let's look here at the 7018. First and second pass just increased arc force. The arc force didn't really do much, honestly, and the reason is, is the flux on the rod, the more you push it, it doesn't really burn off faster. And that's something I've noticed with 7018, and that's why you can rest the flux on the plate and run it that way, is that the flux does not burn off as fast as a lot of the other rods. So increasing the arc force only matters if the t arc gets tighter between the tip of the rod and the plate, well, it doesn't really get tighter because the flux isn't burning off faster. Now, if I ran higher amperage and higher arc force, it might work because the higher amperage will burn off more flux. Therefore, the arc gap could get tighter, but based on these settings, not really much of a change. Now, pass three, where I ran even higher arc force, you can see the heat input increase, the bead slumped down you can see that in a profile. The penetration is maybe arguably a little bit deeper, but it's also hitting more of the bottom plate than the top plate. So again, I don't know that there's much difference there. Now, the 532 ran at 160 amps with normal arc force, does have more penetration in the root, more penetration in the sides, and overall is a more favorable profile, no undercut. So if you want increased penetration, it would be a good idea to use the bigger 532 rods. And the weld profile itself is pretty acceptable for quarter inch plate. So realistically, running higher amperage with a bigger rod will net you more penetration. But I don't believe that any of these are going to equal a 6010. So let's look at them side by side. So here we go. The most penetration pretty much are these two for 7018 on top and the 6010 on the bottom. And there's no doubt in my mind that the 6010 has more penetration in the root. So I would say that uh, 6010 wins again this round. It's kind of what I suspected and what was my guess at the beginning of this video. But, you know, I guess we've kind of proved it. Now, I did think about running maybe 150 or 60 amps on an eighth inch 7018 just to see if I could get it to bite in further. But I did test on flat plate doing that, and it didn't really seem to increase penetration much beyond 130 amps on that. So I doubt there'd be much of a difference on a fillet weld. So let's go and conclude this episode. Well, the results of that were pretty interesting. Goes without saying, I think 6010 is going to be king for penetration on, you know, your smaller eighth inch 3.2 mil rods and even 532. Like, I don't even have any 532 6010s, but I can't even imagine how much that, you know, at a much higher amperage than 95 amps would actually bite into this. I mean, I'd almost bet you'd get, you know, <laughs> two thirds of the way through this quarter inch plate with that. But yeah. Hopefully you found it interesting. Let me know if you were right or wrong on your guess. But uh, needless to say, had some fun making this. So until next time, thanks for sticking around, guys.